and I will tell her. Bye-bye. Hi, Rose. Rose, Miles called again. He wants you to meet him outside the concert hall. I asked you to tell him I'm not going. I'm not going to do your dirty work for you, Rose. Well, I don't want to talk to him. He makes me feel foolish. I don't even feel comfortable telling him St. Olaf stories. I want to know exactly what he said to make you feel that way. Look, I'm not going out with him. You go, Blanche. What? Well, you like him. I know you do, so you go. What? Well, I couldn't. Of course she couldn't. You stay out of this, daughter. <laughs> Why not? It's all over between us. He'll know that tonight. It's impossible. I'd, I'd feel like a... I feel like a... A, a backstabbing slut? <laughs> no. Then please go for me. I'll feel better knowing this thing is finally over with. Well, since you put it that way, uh, but only as a personal favor to you, honey. Well, I guess I better go get dressed. Thank you, Blanche. Can you believe that backstabbing slut? <laughs> We couldn't pass a horse without Charlie saying, can I show you something in an Oxford? <laughs> <laughs> ah, and then he'd laugh, and I'd laugh. Sometimes even the horse would laugh. <laughs> I mean, I was the one who thought up big squeaky toys for cows. By the time I got to high school, the kids had made up this really mean nickname for me just because I had hairy legs. What'd they call you? Rose with the hairy legs. <laughs> you could call me Enrique. No, I don't think I can. Maybe I better talk to Nurse Defarge. I think I could handle it with a little more tact. Ah, good morning, ladies. Not for you, nursey, nurse, nurse, nurse. Someone was actually able to deceive me once. <laughs> Do tell, Rose. St. Olaf's most famous OBMAG. What's that? Obstetrician magician. <laughs> the amazing Shapiro. He delivered Bridget. But it was so confusing. It's a girl. Now it's a dove. Now it's a glass of milk. I don't know how he got her in that deck of cards. But there she was, right after the King of Hearts. <laughs> Is this your baby? <laughs> All our children were conceived on special St. Olaf holidays. Adam was conceived on the day of the Princess Pig when they had the pig crowning. And Janella was conceived on Hay Day. That's the day we St. Olafians celebrate hay. <laughs> Rose, do you think you could wrap this up before Rebecca goes into labor? Then there was the day of the wheat when everybody came to town dressed as sandwiches. <laughs> Charlie and I forgot to put cheese between us, and before I knew it, there was Kirsten. <laughs> I, I was just having a conversation with, with two people over there, Speculating on if you could have any two people in the world, living or dead, to your house for dinner, what would you eat? You don't realize how much you care for a man until you see him streaking toward the earth trying to grab a bird. I'd have gotten your rose, too, if my mother would named me Violet. Tonight, we were the king and queen of the rumba. <laughs> Olé. <laughs> And Agnes said you were a lot of hot air? And you said she was just jealous because she wasn't getting any? <laughs> and I said, getting any what? And you said, rice pudding, Rose? <laughs> Rose, it's not that funny. <laughs> I know. I think I better keep the lid on this paint thinner. <laughs> Cold, Omar. It's called Gnurkenflirten cake. Go Flugenachen. What? Go Flugenachen. 
It's Scandinavian for someone who so ducks dark, his boat in a handicapped slip. <laughs> Let me be your Veden Frugen. Oh, I'm not obliged to be my Veden Flugen. Frugen. Yes, but I'm not one to blow my own Vertuben Flugen. I think she's a Gurkana knocking. <laughs> well, what exactly does that mean? Literally, it's the precise moment when Dog Dude turns white. <laughs> General, it refers to the kind of person you don't want to share your hooten coggles with. Rose, if you say one more of those stupid words, I'll so help me. Oh, out your tube and burbles. <laughs> sure, I didn't flop around on the floor with my eyes bulging out gasping for air. I haven't done that at a party in years. Please forgive me. It wasn't my fault. My cousins have been marrying each other for generations. I'm <laughs> sorry. Here. He had a theory. Even a trip to the bank can be exciting if you wear a ski mask. He would say that often? Almost as often as he'd say, don't shoot, it's me, Charlie Nyland. Whenever a new family would move into St. Olaf, we'd all hop on the tractor and ride out to the new neighbor's farm. 30 or 40 of us carrying vats of smoked fish and big pitchers of freshly squeezed potato juice. <laughs> While cousin Dak played getting to know you through the hole in his windpipe. <laughs> Tell me, Rose, did you ever accompany him through the hole in your head? You know what he has under that trench coat? A wrench? <laughs> That's what Mother called it. You know what's also a shame? What? When you sit down and your thighs squish out to twice their size. That's a shame. Maybe it's because of the horrible St. Olaf falling leaf story. Please, Rose, if this is a story about a man named Leaf, I don't want to hear it. It's not that long. No. It has a surprise ending. All right, Rose, just the ending, but keep it short. Splat! I've only been to one surprise party in my life, but I'll never forget it. It was for Grandma Nyland's 100th birthday. <laughs> She was from a whaling village in the old country, so we kind of made that the theme of the party. We all dressed as Vikings with helmets and spears. And we all crowded into her little room up over the barn. And she walked in and lit a candle. And we yelled, surprise! And she dropped dead right there. <laughs> it's all because of my high school history teacher, Mr. Stickelmeyer. He was a Nazi. Oh, come on. <laughs> Rose, a lot of students don't like their teachers, but no, you don't... No, I mean it. He was part of a nefarious plot by the Germans to teach misinformation so America's youth would be really stupid when the Germans invaded. <laughs> St. Olaf was the first town chosen for their experiment. I guess they figured they had a leg up there. His orders came right from the top. You mean Hitler? Who's Hitler? <laughs> Girls who'll take their money. Do you know what he thinks we are? Waitresses? <laughs> Wait a minute. Have you and Miles been baking together? <laughs> Rose, I would never do that to you. I swear. Good. Because if I ever caught Miles with another woman in my kitchen, I'd... <laughs> It's not that easy to make new friends. It sure wasn't for the first Eskimo family that moved to St. Olaf. No. <laughs> Especially after they sawed a hole and went salmon fishing in the middle of the local ice skating rink. And then there was the Halloween they gave all the kids whale blubber. <laughs> And then there was the time they borrowed every ice tray in town to build an addition over their garage. What was the point, Rose? I guess after the baby came, they needed more room. <laughs> the point of 
the story. Well, d gradually they were able to make friends and they ended up the most popular family in town. But only because they went out and met people. Isn't that right, Rose? No, it was because in the drought of 49, their house melted and kept the town from dehydrating. <laughs> Of course, the only crime in St. Olaf was that more people didn't practice better oral hygiene. <laughs> so, most of the time, they just sat around the jailhouse and took pictures of each other behind the bars in goofy poses. <laughs> I don't know whether to paint all silver. The horse who brought the news to St. Olaf that the British had no intention of coming. <laughs> or old Brisker. The horse who, because of a printing error on the ballot slips, was elected water commissioner for six months. <laughs> it's like that old Scandinavian saying, you can let two angry mackerel fight it out in a purse, but don't ever plan on carrying that purse to a formal affair. <laughs> well, it loses a little in the translation. translation. Rose, do you have any idea how weird you are? <laughs>